I will require it of him. I will take revenge. That means if you do not follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Almighty God is telling you in the Bible, I will take revenge. Any Christian who does not follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Almighty God is telling in the Bible, he will take revenge from you. The prophecy says, and whosoever will not hearken unto the words which he shall speak in my name. Almighty God is saying, if you do not heed the words of this prophet, who will speak in my name? And we know in the last and final revelation of the Quran, which was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, every chapter of the Quran, except for Surah Tawbah, chapter number nine, begins with the formula, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Every chapter of the Quran begins with Bismillah Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. It is fulfillment of the prophecy, whosoever will not hearken unto his words, which he shall speak in my name. Saying Bismillah Rahman Rahim is far superior to saying in the name of God, because God is general. In the name of Allah, it's a proper noun. And whosoever shall not hearken unto his words, which he shall speak in my name. The name of Almighty God and the proper name of Almighty God is Allah. Not only in the Quran, also in the Bible. That's the reason when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, when he was put on the cross. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 15, verse number 34. And Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 27, verse number 46. When Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was put on the cross, on the 11th hour he says, Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani. So as to say, O oh God, O oh God, why hast thou forsaken me? Alhamdulillah, in all the translations of the Bible, in all the versions of the Bible, irrespective of whatever language is translated into English, Hindi, French, German, Portuguese, the original words of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, has been maintained. Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani. So as to say, then the translation says, Oh God, oh God, why has thou forsaken me? I'm asking you a question. Does Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani sound like, Oh God, oh God, why has thou forsaken me? Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani. Does it sound like, Jehovah, Jehovah, why has thou forsaken me? <laughs> Says no. Hebrew and Arabic are sister languages. If you translate Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani into Arabic, it is Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani. It sounds similar. And if you read the Scofield's Bible, it says Allah means A-L-A-H, Allah, the name of God. Even Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he called Almighty God by Allah, not by God. The prophecy says, whosoever will not hearken unto his words, which he shall speak in my name, Almighty God is saying my name, that is Allah. And every chapter of the glorious Quran, except for Surah Tawbah chapter 9, begins with the beautiful formula, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. <laughs> Almighty God is telling the Christians and the Jews, both of them, if you do not follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who he shall speak in my name, in the name of Allah, I will take revenge. Furthermore, if you read, it's mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 21 and 22. How shall we know the words of the prophet are from Lord? How will we know if what the prophet says, it is not from the Lord? And the verse continues, if the prophet prophesizes something and it doesn't follow, it doesn't come to pass, that means it is not the word of Lord. That means to make it more sure, the prophecy continues. How will we come to know? Maybe anyone will say in the name of God. It may not be the word of God. So how will we come to know whether it's a word of God or not? So the prophecy continues that if the prophet says something, if they prophesy and if it does not follow, if it does not come to pass, those words are not from Almighty God. And we know everything what the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, prophesies, 
came exactly to the minutest detail. It came out to be true. Time will not permit us to speak about all the prophecies of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I'll just mention one or two. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that the Muslims will defeat the two superpowers. At that time, the two superpowers were the Persians and the Byzantines. At that time, the Muslims were so few. Leave aside defeat, the Muslims couldn't even have thought that they could resist these two superpowers. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at that time said that the Muslims will defeat the two superpowers, the Persians and the Byzantines. And Alhamdulillah, several years later, the Muslims did defeat the Persians and the Byzantines. I'll give you one more prophecy of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that a man by the name of Suraka, the person who plotted to kill the Prophet when he migrated to Medina after the plan of the pagan Arabs failed when they tried to kill the Prophet and when Prophet migrated to Medina, he plotted to kill the Prophet. The Prophet prophesizes that this man Suraka, he will become a Muslim and after he becomes a Muslim, he will have access to the crown of the emperor of Persia. And we know from history that Suraka, who tried to kill the prophet, later on he accepted Islam. Not only did he accept Islam, he even took part several years later. He took part in the Muslim army to defeat the Persians and the prophecy came exactly true. He also had access to the crown of the emperor of Persia. Imagine the prophecy was fulfilled to the minutest detail and there are several prophecies. That means Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is a true prophet and the words he spoke were the words of Almighty God. Time will not permit us to discuss all the prophecies in the Old Testament. I'll just mention two more due to lack of time. It's mentioned in the book of Isaiah chapter number 29, verse number 12, that the book shall be given to the prophet and it will be said, read, I pray thee, and he will say, I am not learned. If we go to the original manuscript, the verse of Isaiah chapter number 29, verse number 12, talking about the prophet, the book shall be given to him and it would be said, read, I pray thee, I pray thee, is an addition. In the original manuscript, it is not there. So actually it will be said, read. And he will say, I am not learned. And if we know the history of Prophet Muhammad the first revelation of Almighty God, the glorious Quran, which was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was by Archangel Gabriel in Garahira. And when Archangel Gabriel, Jibreel alayhi salam, when he told to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ikra, the Prophet replied, Ma ana bikari, I am not learned. Exact fulfillment of the prophecy of the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12, that when the book will be given and will be told to him, read, he will say, I am not learned. When Jibreel alayhi salam told to Prophet Ikra, the Prophet replied, Ma ana bikari, I am not learned. This prophecy fulfills no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The one prophecy in detail about Deuteronomy chapter number 18, verse number 18 to 22. This is second book of Isaiah chapter number 29, verse number 12. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is also mentioned by name in the Old Testament. It's mentioned in the Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. In Hebrew, I will say, it says, Hikko mamitakim vikullu muhammadim zaidudi zairai baina Jerusalem. He is most sweet. He is altogether lovely. He is my beloved. He is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Here, the name of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is there. It says Muhammadim. In the Hebrew and Semitic languages, when we want to give respect to someone, we add M to it. So to the name of Muhammad is added M, it becomes Muhammadim. 
and they've translated it into altogether lovely. But the original name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is there in the Old Testament, Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. Hikko Muhammad Takim, Vikullu Muhammadim, Zaidudi Zairai Baina Jerusalem. Due to shortage of time, we will discuss a few prophecies mentioned about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the New Testament. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 6, that Jesus, peace be upon him, said, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, I have been sent as a messenger to you, confirming the laws that came before me and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come whose name shall be Ahmad. There are several prophecies of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. Time will not permit us to discuss about all the prophecies. We'll just discuss a few. A few important prophecies about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the New Testament. The Jews, they were waiting for the Messiah, but they did not believe Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was the Messiah because it was known to them that before the Messiah, Elias will come. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, told that. He explicitly mentioned it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 17, verse number 11 to 13. Elias will surely come before, and he shall put things straight. He has already come, but you know him not. Then the disciples understood what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is talking is about John the Baptist. The Elias, which is supposed to come before the Messiah, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was John the Baptist. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, also said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 11, verse number 11, there is not a human being born of a woman which has risen greater than John the Baptist. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 11, verse number 11, there has not been a human being who was born to a woman which has risen greater than John the Baptist. The Jews, they were waiting for the Messiah, for the Christ, and Elias. So the Jews, they sent priests and Levites to John the Baptist. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 21. And they asked John the Baptist, that why aren't you very clear? Why don't you tell us? Art thou the Christ? How long? Why don't you make it clear? Art thou the Christ? And John the Baptist confesses. And he said, I confess to you, I am not the Christ. I am not the Messiah. And we know Jesus Christ, peace be upon you, was the Messiah. So John the Baptist could not lie. And he said, I'm not the Messiah. The next question they ask, Art thou Elias? And he says, no. They ask the third question, Art thou that prophet? He says, no. Basically, in Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 21 to verse number 25, there were three questions asked to John the Baptist. Art thou the Christ? And he says, no. And we know he was not the Christ. He was not the Messiah. The second question, Art thou Elias? He says, no. Now there is a contradiction between Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and John the Baptist, between Isa alayhi salam and Yahya alayhi salam, and both of them, according to us, they were prophets of God. We cannot say that either of them lied. This we leave it to the Christian to solve the problem. Who told a lie? We will not interfere. We aren't so much concerned about the second question, who is Elias? It's the problem of the Bible and the Christian, we will not interfere. We don't to take sides. But we Muslims are more bothered about the third question. Art thou that prophet? And the answer is no. John the Baptist says no. And who is this that prophet? If you read in the cross reference in any Bible with concordance, it will tell you that prophet is same prophet which is prophesied in the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 18 verse number 15 to 18. There are three distinct questions asked to John the Baptist. But the Christians only see two questions. Why? 
They only think two questions asked. Art thou the Christ? Art thou the Messiah? And he says, no. Art thou the Elias? And he says, no. Then the third question, art thou that prophet? And the answer is no. That means all three are different prophets. The Messiah is different. Elias is different. And that prophet is different. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is the Messiah, which we agree. We do not doubt. The more than 100 prophecies mentioned about Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in the Old Testament. Because all the Muslims believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is the messenger of God. Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of Almighty God. We believe that he was the Messiah translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern day Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. We do not argue regarding more than 100 prophecies mentioned in the Old Testament about the Messiah, about Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, because we believe he was the Messiah. We believe he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. But we tell the Christians, why do you deny the prophecies of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mentioned in the Old Testament and the New Testament? <laughs> Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 21 to 25, three distinct questions are asked to John the Baptist. Art thou the Messiah? Art thou the Christ? He says, no. Art thou the Elias? He says, no. Art thou that prophet? He says, no. That means there were three different people, not three in one. So if you say Jesus is the Messiah, peace be upon him, Jesus cannot be that prophet. That prophet has to be someone else, and that is no one but the last and final messenger prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And we have discussed a few minutes back all the similarities between that prophet and Moses, peace be upon him. It continues and it's mentioned in Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 25. Then the priest and the Levites, the Jews, they say, Why does thou baptize if thou not the Christ? Thou art not Elias. Thou art not that prophet. There are three distinct things told to John the Baptist that why do thou baptize? Why do you baptize if you are not the Christ? If you are not Elias, if you are not that prophet? Three distinct questions. You ask any Christian, who is this that prophet mentioned in Gospel of John chapter number one, verse number 21, 25? They have no reply. They can't say it, it means Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, because it's already mentioned that he is the Messiah. It refers to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's further mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I will pray to my Father to send you another comforter who will abide with you forever. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16, that I will pray to my Father to send you another comforter who will abide with you forever. That means Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, will not abide with the Christian forever. This new comforter, this new prophet who will come, will abide with you forever. He further says in the Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse number 26, But when the comforter shall come, who I shall send from my father, the spirit of truth preceding before thee, he shall testify me, this comforter to come, whom my father will send, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, he will testify me, he will talk about me, he will testify that I was the messenger of God. It's further mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. For if I depart, shall I send him? All these three verses I quoted, Gospel of John chapter 14 verse 16, Gospel of John chapter 15 verse 26, and Gospel of John chapter number 16 verse number 7 talks about the comforter. When you ask the Christians, who is this comforter? They say, this comforter is the Holy Spirit. I ask the Christians, how does it refer to the Holy Spirit? It's clearly mentioned in the Gospel of John chapter number 16 verse number 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. For if I depart, shall I send him? 
the criteria for the comforter to come is that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, should depart. Only after he departs will the comforter come. We know that the Holy Spirit was already there before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was born. The Holy Spirit was there in the womb of Elizabeth. The Holy Spirit was there when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was being baptized. So surely this prophecy cannot refer to the Holy Spirit. Allahumma barikala Muhammad. The word that they translate to comforter in the Greek and Aramaic, they say it is parakletos. Parakletos actually means an advocate or friend. But irrespective whether they translate as comforter or advocate or friend, all of these, mashallah, befect perfectly Prophet Muhammad. But if you go to the original manuscript, it is not parakletos, it is perikletos. And perikletos means the praiseworthy. One who praises. Translated into Arabic, it means Ahmad, which was another name for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The original word is Perikletos, which if you translate means the praiseworthy, the one who praises. The one who praises in Arabic, if you translate, means Ahmad, which was another name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As is mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 6, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, I have been sent as a messenger to you, confirming the law that came before me and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come whose name shall be Ahmad. So original word is Perikletos, which means Ahmad. But irrespective, whether it is Perikletos or Perikletos, whether it is Ahmad, the one who praises, or advocate, or friend, or comforter, Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah, all these meanings befit perfectly the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Further, if you go, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now, for he, when the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hear shall he speak. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. I repeat, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, Verse number 12 to 14, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now, for he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself, all that he shall speak, he shall glorify me. He, 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 he. Five, six, he, telling it's not a Holy Spirit. He shall show you things to come, he shall glorify me. The only messenger of God, the only human being who claimed to be messenger of God after Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and glorified Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, it is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is even mentioned in the last revelation of Almighty God, the glorious Quran. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam repeated the last revelation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, this is the glorious Quran, and is mentioned by name no less than 25 times in the Quran. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, testified and glorified Jesus Christ, peace be upon him in the Quran by name no less than 25 times. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is telling everyone, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he shall speak. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. This prophecy refers to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. There are several other prophecies mentioned in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The criteria given by Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, about knowing a true prophet is mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, Chapter number 7, verse number 16 to 20. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, By their fruits ye shall know them. Do men gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? Every good tree shall bear good fruits. Every evil tree shall bear evil fruits. By their fruits ye shall know them. I repeat. 
Jesus Christ peace be upon him put a criteria. I would like to end my talk by analyzing the criteria Jesus Christ peace be upon him put for a true prophet. Gospel of Matthew chapter number 7 verse number 16 to 20. By their fruits he shall know them. Do men gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? Every good tree shall bear good fruits and every evil tree shall bear evil fruits. By their fruits he shall know them. And we have several testimonies of non-Muslims regarding the greatness of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can give a lecture, you can talk for days together regarding the testimony, not of Muslims, of non-Muslims, regarding the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll just mention a couple to you. There was an article that came in the Time magazine on the 15th of July, 1974. And the title was Great Leaders of History. And many people gave their reasoning. Who was the greatest leader in human history? Historians gave their views. Writers gave. Military men gave. Businessmen gave. Many people gave. One person, he gave his reasoning. His name was Jules Masserman. He was a psychoanalyst, a professor in the University of Chicago in USA. And before he mentions the great leader of history, he gives reasons that a great leader should fulfill three criteria. Number one, that leader, number one, should provide for the well-being of the lead. Number two, he should provide a social organization in which the people will feel secure. Number three, he should provide a set of beliefs. Then Jules Masserman, he gives a name of few leaders. He says that Pasteur and Salk were great leaders in the first sense. Gandhi and Confucius on one hand and Alexander, Caesar and Hitler on the other hand were leaders in the second sense. Some may be also in the third sense. Jesus and Buddha were only leaders in the third sense. But the greatest leader of humankind which fulfilled all three senses was Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Moses to a lesser extent. Jews Masserman, a psychoanalyst from the University of Chicago, USA, he says that pastures and salk may be first sense, first category they fulfilled. They were leaders who provided the well being of the lead. Gandhi and Confucius on one hand, and Alexander, Caesar and Hitler on the other hand, they were of the second sense. That means they gave a social organization in which the people felt secured, and some extent maybe second, some set of beliefs they gave. Jesus and Buddha, he says, only in the third sense, they gave a set of beliefs. But the greatest leader who fulfills in all three categories, according to Jews Masaman, provides the well-being of the lead, provides a social organization which people feel secure, provide a set of beliefs, is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And Moses to a lesser extent, maybe I believe, maybe I think so. Jews Masaman was a Jew, so he put Moses also. And fulfilling Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse number 18, that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is like Moses, peace be upon him. And Jesus, peace be upon him, is unlike Moses, peace be upon him. There was a book written by a famous historian by the name of Michael H. Hart. The topic of that book was 100 most influential persons in history. Right from Adam, peace be upon him, till the time the book was written, a few years back. And number one, Michael H. Hart is not a Muslim. 
may be a Jew or a Christian. He puts number one, the most influential human being in the world. He places Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jesus, number three. And he says, Jesus and Moses, their influence put together is nowhere compared to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him alone. George Bernard Shaw, he says, that if a man was to assume the dictatorship, he talks about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, a man, if he assumes the dictatorship of this modern world, he will succeed in solving the problems of humankind and he would give the much needed peace and security to this world. He's talking on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that if Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was to become a dictator of the modern world, he would give the solution to the problems of humankind and would give it peace and security which is much needed. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Aqaf, chapter number 46, verse number 10, say, if this book, the glorious Quran, is from Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you reject it, after a messenger from the Bani Israel, from the children of Israel, testifies to it, he believes in it and you are arrogant, you are unjust. Allah guides not the unjust. I would like to end my talk with the quotation of the Goddess Quran, Surah Kawsar, chapter number 108, verse number 1 to 3, which says, Inna aataina kal kawsar, fasal lili rabbika wanhar, inna shaniya kawal aftar. To thee, to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Allah Almighty says, to thee, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have granted the font of abundance. So, turn to thy Lord in prayer and sacrifice. And anyone who hated thee, anyone who hates Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he would be cut off from all future hopes. alhamdulillah <laughs> rabbil Allahumma barikana Muhammad Allahumma barikana Muhammad Alhamdulillah now we come to the second part of the program which is the more interesting part of the program that is the open question answer session here you are most welcome to ask any questions on the topic Muhammad peace be upon him in the Bible there are two microphones that have been set for asking questions. One for the gents on my right and one for the ladies on my left. There are certain rules and regulations to be followed before we have the question answer session. Point number one, for the Muslims, ask questions related to the topic. Muhammad, peace be upon him in the Bible. Please ask one question at a time. If you have a second question, you can go behind the queue and wait for your second chance. Before you pose the question, mention your name and your profession so that I will be in a better position to reply. Please keep your question brief. The question should be in two or three sentences. If it's more than that, it becomes a mini lecture. This is a question answer time, not a lecture time. We would first give opportunity to our non-Muslim friends, brothers and sisters, the Christian brothers and sisters, our non-Muslim brothers and sisters, that if they have any questions, they would be given the first opportunity. Because today, the non-Muslims, the Christians, they are our guests of honor. And as far as the non-Muslims are concerned, they can ask questions on the topic, they can ask questions out of the topic also. They can ask any questions on Islam and comparative religion, on Islam, on Christianity, on Hinduism, on the Quran, on the Bible, on Hindu scriptures, any question. For non-Muslims, they need not restrict to the topic of the lecture. But for Muslims, they have to restrict themselves 
to the topic of the lecture. First, we'll only allow the non-Muslims to ask questions. After the non-Muslims' questions have been exhausted, then we'll give opportunity, if time permits, to questions from the Muslims. I would request the volunteers that if there are any non-Muslims waiting in the queue, give them the first opportunity, get them in front of the queue, and after the non-Muslims finish, then the Muslims can be given a chance. And I request the non-Muslim, this is the opportunity. Normally, after religious talk, you don't have a question answer session. You hardly have. Here, you have an opportunity to ask questions, to clarify your doubts. You don't have to agree with me. You can disagree with me. Come and put forth your question. This is the opportunity. You don't get it always. We will first take the question from the non-Muslim brother on my right. Yes, brother, your name, your profession, and your question. My name is Benjamin Kukwas Nyagokla, a student of Eagle Eye Media Film Academy. My first question is, you said um, when Jesus Christ died, um, rising up, he told the people that he is going to send, his father is going to send a comforter to them. But to what I believe or what I learned from church is that he was going to send the Holy Spirit down onto them. So I just want to know from you that what do you people believe it is? The brothers asked the question that when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that I will send you a comforter when he goes, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. That's what the church says. What is my view? Brother, I gave the reply to this in my talk. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that I will pray to my father to send you a comforter who will abide with you forever. Gospel of John chapter number 15 verse 26 says, But when the comforter comes, who I will send from my father, he will testify me. Gospel of John chapter number 16 verse number 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. The criteria for the comforter to come is that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, should go. Only after he goes will he send the comforter. If you say the comforter was the Holy Spirit, we already know from the Bible that the Holy Spirit was there before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came onto this earth. Before he was born. The Holy Spirit was there in the womb of Elizabeth. The Holy Spirit was also there when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was being baptized. So this prophecy cannot refer to the Holy Spirit. It refers to no one but the last and final messenger prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Brother, do you believe that there is one God? Yes, please, I have a second question. Second question, okay, brother. Yeah, um, there's one thing um, in the religion that when you are non-Christian and you want to marry a Muslim woman, uh, it is said that you ought to switch your religion before you can get married to the woman. So why is it so? Brother, ask the question that if a Christian man wants to marry a Muslim woman, he has to change the religion. Today morning, in Accra, I was asked, that when a Christian woman marries a Muslim man, the Christian woman need not change her religion, correct? This is what the question was. Because the verse of the Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 5, lawful for you from this day are the women of Ahle Kitab in marriage. When a Christian woman marries a Muslim man, whatever she believes in all the prophets from Adam, peace be upon him, till Jesus, peace be upon him, the Muslims believe in them all. So all the prophets who she believes in, she does not have to reject any. And the Muslims respect all the prophets. But when a Muslim girl marries a Christian man, the Muslims believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him also. And the Christians don't believe. So that means when she marries in a family of Christianity, they do not believe in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, so she will not be comfortable. But according to me, the Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 221, it says, that do not marry unbelieving women until they believe. A believing woman who is a slave woman is far superior than an unbelieving woman even if she allows you. So you cannot marry a non-Muslim until she becomes a Muslim. And according to me, it's also mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 72. لَقَدْ كَفْرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيُّ بْنُ مَرِيمَ They are doing kuf, they are blaspheming. Those who say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is Allah. That means the Quran says 
Many Christians say Jesus is God. It's kuf, it's blasphemy. That means one place of the Quran says you can marry the girl from the Ali Kitab, Jew or a Christian. One place says you cannot marry a mushrik, one who worships somebody else as God. Chapter 5, verse 72 says, the Christians say that Jesus is God with his shirk. Who can you marry? The reply is given in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse 110. That woman, Ahl al-Kitab, laqana khair allahum. Min humul mu'minuna wa aqsar humul fasikun. If the people of the book had faith, it would have been better for them. Among them, there are some who are believers, they are mu'min. But the majority are perverted transgressors. That means you can only marry those Christians who believe in one God. Not the Christian girls who believe in three in one, who believe Jesus is God. It is wrong. You can only marry those Christians who believe God is one and does not believe Jesus is God, who believe Jesus is the messenger of God. Brother, I would like to ask you. But is it, please, is it possible that a non-Christian would marry a Muslim? It's not permitted. A Christian cannot marry a Muslim because the Christian believes Jesus is God. It is shirk. It is the biggest sin in Islam. Allah says in Surah Maryam, chapter number 19, verse number 88 to 92, and they say, Allah most gracious has begotten a son. Indeed, they have put forth a thing most monstrous. Anyone says that Allah has begotten a son, it is the biggest abuse you can give to Almighty God. If the sky had feeling, the sky would have burst open. The earth would have split open. And the mountains would have fallen down to utter ruin. If anyone says that Allah has begotten a son, it is the biggest abuse you can give to Allah. The sky would split open. The earth would have split open. The mountains would fall down to utter ruin. That's the reason anyone who says Jesus is God, it is shirk. It is prohibited. It's a sin. That's the reason no Christian can marry a Muslim. Any Christian who says Jesus is God, you cannot marry. But if the Christian girl says that Jesus is not God, the messenger of God, and she believes in one God, then no problem. Hope that answers the question. Brother, do you believe there is one God? Sure. Do you believe Jesus is God? No. MashaAllah. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes. MashaAllah. That means they're Muslim. If you believe that God is one, and if you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God, these are the minimum two things required for a person to enter into the fold of Islam. Would you like to say it in Arabic? Would you like to say it in Arabic? What do you say in English? That there's no one worthy of worship except God, except Allah, and that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Would you like to say it in Arabic? Yes. Anyone is forcing you? No. You're doing it out of your own free will? Yes. Okay, I'll say it in Arabic and you repeat it. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. There is none worthy of worship. There is none worthy of worship. Except Allah. Accept Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Prophet Muhammad. That Prophet Muhammad. Is the messenger. Is the messenger. And servant of Allah. And servant of Allah. MashaAllah, you have become a Muslim and may Allah, inshallah, grant you Jannah. May you grant you paradise. May you get the best in this world and the Akhirah. I would like to give you a copy of the translation of the Quran. Can you come please on the stage? Oh.